My name is Josh. I'm a senior scientist at the Allen Institute for Neurodynamics in Seattle. Um, I'm also a longtime NeuroPixels user, and I oversee the development of the OpenEPIS GUI. So the GUI was designed um, as a general purpose application for high channel count electrophysiology experiments. Uh, core software development team consists of myself and two full-time engineers that are based at the Allen Institute. Um, but the source code includes contributions from almost 50 people from around the world. And the host application is cross-platform, but uh, the NeuroPixels plugin specifically uh, only works on Windows. Um, say the distinguishing feature of the GUI relative to other software in this domain is the plugin architecture. Um, so what this means is that all neural data is handled by plugins that are compiled separately from the main application. So it, this makes it easy to customize your processing pipeline for different types of experiments or to use the same data processing chain with a variety of different data sources. Um, and the GUI can currently acquire signals from the OpenEFIS acquisition board, uh, Intan recording controllers, XX systems sold by NeuroNexus, lab streaming layer compatible EEG headsets, and most National Instruments DAC cards. Uh, but of course, today I'm going to demo features of the software relevant for NeuroPixels recordings. So I've got a quick software demo to show. Um, so yeah, when you first open up the, the software for the first time, um, you will see this pop-up window that allows you to select a default configuration. Um, so this is an easy way to, to get up and running with different types of signal chains. Um, in this case, we're going to select the NeuroPixels plugin. And if you're running this for the first time, that would download this NeuroPixels P PXI plugin into your processor list and then uh, load a uh, recommended configuration for recording from NeuroPixels. So we're going to hit load. I don't actually have any NeuroPixels hardware hooked up right now. So I'm going to run the plugin in simulation mode and select one NeuroPixels 1.0 probe to connect. And um, then it adds these three plugins to the signal chain, one for um, receiving data from the NeuroPixels PXI chassis, uh, one for recording data, and one for visualizing data, the, the LFP viewer. Uh, we can take a more detailed look at the signal chain in this graph tab. Um, we can see the data streams that are coming through the signal chain. So the NeuroPixels PXI plugin uh, generates two data streams, one for the AP band sampled at 30 kilohertz, and one for the LFP band sampled at 2.5 kilohertz, and these propagate through the rest of the signal chain. Um, if we were using a NeuroPixels 2.0 probe, um, there are only one wideband data stream. Um, and so let's take a look at this NeuroPixels interface. Uh, so on the left, you have a representation of all 960 sites on the probe. Um, the yellow ones are the ones that are currently enabled, um, but we can select some others and hit enable, and that will um, uh, activate those electrodes and deselect the ones that are connected to the same set of channels. Um, you can also use this interface to change the gain of the sites um, or switch the reference from external to tip. Uh, and if we switch it into probe signal view mode and hit acquire, um, then we can um, yeah, now visualize activity as a heat map across the, the active sites. Obviously, this is just simulated data, but if this were a real experiment, then um, yeah, you'd be able to see the relative amplitude of, of signals across the different sites. Um, so yeah, now I want to show the plugin installer. So if you go file uh, plugin installer, um, then you get a uh, list of all the plugins that are available to download and extend the functionality of the, of the software. Um, there's links to documentation to all of these, uh, so you can learn more about them. But we're going to select one that's specific for NeuroPixels. It's called the NeuroPixels Common Average Reference, NeuroPixels CAR. Uh, if we install this, it uh, adds it to our processor list. And now we can drag and drop it into the single chain. And what this one does is it is a common average reference, but it takes into account the which channels on the NeuroPixels probe are, are simultaneously sampled. And it, it does a little bit better job of removing noise than a standard common average reference. Um, and I dropped this into the single chain to the right of the record node. Uh, but if I dropped it to the left of the record node, the behavior would be slightly different. So this is an important thing to pay attention to. Um, which is that signals always flow from left to right in the signal chain. Um, so if the this common average reference is placed here, it means the data that's being recorded by the record node will have this referencing applied to it. Um, but usually we, re we recommend recording data exactly as it comes out of your acquisition system. 
and then using these uh, filter plugins for visualization purposes, or if you're doing closed loop feedback experiments, um, that's another reason why you might want to filter the data online. Um, and so, yeah, before I show the visualization, I'm going to remove this plugin and uh, add a file reader, uh, and then browse for some pre recorded neural pixels data. Uh, and then uh, now you can see this pre recorded data, 384 channels streaming in through the LFP viewer. Um, we can modify this, this visualization in, in various ways. Um, we can split the display vertically and scroll through different parts of the probe. Uh, or we can or split it like this and uh, zoom in on a single channel while we scroll through the rest of the probe. Uh, you can also do things like uh, change the time base to a longer interval, uh, change, uh, change the channel height so you can view more channels at once, um, and also set uh, to spike raster display. So instead of visualizing the continuous signals, you just uh, visualize a single um, single vertical line for every spike that's detected. Um, you can change the color scheme too, to something like green. Um, and now we can browse through all of the, the spikes on this probe. Um, and if you see something interesting, but it scrolls past the screen, uh, you can double click on this timeline and then uh, scroll backwards in time to see what you missed. And then just double click to go back to go back to real time. Uh, another visualization that's useful for NeuroPixels data is called the probe viewer. Uh, we can add this to the signal chain. Um, let's change the, the range here. And um, this displays the data as a heat map with uh, channels on the y-axis and samples or, or time on the x-axis. Um, and you can scroll through the, the whole probe or uh, zoom out to display, the, 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 display all the data at once. Um, this is the plugin that you can connect to planning software like Pinpoint or Neural Trajectory Explorer if you want to visualize the um, brain regions that your probe is passing through side by side with the physiology data. Um, and then I also want to quickly demonstrate the ability to detect uh, spikes in the data. So um, this, there's a spike detector plugin that you can configure with uh, any number of electrodes. Uh, let's just add electrodes for the first 100 channels of our NeuroPixels probe. Uh, you can see details about them here. Uh, you can also control A to select all of them and then change things like the thresholding method. So set like a, a automated threshold based on the standard deviation of the signals. And then uh, just add a spike viewer. And now you can visualize the spike waveforms that are detected across all these sites. In a second, the thresholds are going to update. And you'll be able to see the automatic thresholds that were detected for all of these channels. Um, and we can scroll through a bunch of them or, or zoom out to view more of them simultaneously. And then uh, last thing I want to show is um, there are a number of ways to get data out of OpenEFA's software into other applications. Um, and one of the easiest ones for things like spikes is the event broadcaster. Uh, you can just drop this into the signal chain. And now um, information about all of these spikes will be available in whatever software you're, you're using. Um, you can use that for things like real-time decoding or custom visualizations in, in Python or MATLAB. Um, so yeah, those are just a, a few of the, the features of OpenEFIS. I recommend you check out the documentation to learn about to learn more about what you can do. Um, and then, yeah, just briefly, uh, before I wrap up, I want to mention we are hard at work on the next major release, um, which will include some following upgrades, uh, simplified API for building new plugins. Um, yeah, one thing I didn't mention is that it is uh, relatively straightforward to build your own plugins to add functionality to the software. And if you're interested in this, uh, don't he hesitate to, to reach out and we can help you get started. Um, but the next version will have an even simpler plugin API, which will make it easier to add new features. Um, ability to run the software in headless mode without any graphical user interface. Uh, for example, if you want to control your entire experiment from MATLAB or Python, um, as well as uh, enhanced support for multi-threading to reduce the amount of time it takes to process data during closed loop experiments. And uh, assuming that IMEC releases more information about their NeuroPixels API, uh, we want to make it possible to acquire NeuroPixels data on platforms other than Windows, which we're really excited about. Um, so to try out the software for yourself, you can head to openethisorg slash GUI to download it. Um, all of the code is, of course, open source and hosted on GitHub. 
And yet to learn more about the, the features I talked about, you can read the documentation at openephys.github.io slash GUIDocs.